Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video you will learn about tree data structure. So you are probably using and seeing tree data structure every day without even recognizing it. So in this video you will learn what it is. When it is used in programming I will show you real life examples and purposes of tree data structures in programming and teach you all the important concepts that is in the first part of the video. And then in the second part of the video I will show you the code. So let's return to tree data structures, and as you already know, all programming concepts were drawn from real life. So let me show you where tree data structure is used in real life. So here I have a picture from children's book, and it is a picture of family tree. We have grandparents, parents, and then kids, and when these kids grow up and get married and have their own kids, this tree will grow even more. So this is a perfect example of hierarchy of parent-child relationship and that is exactly what tree data structure is used for. It is used to represent that hierarchy. So what is an example of this in programming? Well, a perfect example is the way that you structure and organize folders in your computer. So for example, here I have a folder called menu that is root folder and then inside it I have drinks and food. So if I open this food folder, we get more subfolders, which are children of food folder. So desserts, pasta, pizza, snacks, and then let's open desserts, for example. And as you can see, we get more folders, cheesecake, chocolate cake, fruit cake, and so on. So why are we doing this? Well, there are multiple reasons, but the main one is that you can organize your data better this way and it is easier to search later. So it is easier to find a specific recipe or a picture of a food or whatever you want to store inside these folders. So this is very common use of trees in programming and in computers. So your operating system uses tree data structure in order to organize files and folders in your file system in your computer. Um, and that they are also used in databases and the most common use that I have seen of tree data structure in programming is for different searching and sorting algorithms. And we will learn about these later after you learn all of the basics. So let's see what are some other basic things that you should know about trees. So a singular entity of a tree is called node. It is basically a building block of a tree. So let's say that this is a node. And then multiple nodes build a tree data structure. So if I do this, this here becomes a tree data structure. So this is parent node, these are child nodes, and then these lines that connect the parent with the child are called edges. And this here is a tree data structure. Now, something that is not allowed in tree data structure is for the children to be interconnected like this. So this is not allowed because this would be incest. Actually, that is not the reason. The reason is that this here is not tree data structure anymore. This is something else completely. And if you know how this structure is called, let me know in the comments. And then if you don't know how this structure is called, check the comments. <laughs> and um, I might answer to your comment if you ask me and if you really cannot find the information on the internet. So again, this here is not allowed for tree data structures. The children cannot be interconnected. And then these children can have their own children. So what you can do is you can add a node here and then let's say two child nodes here like this and again this is tree data structure and inside these nodes you can store any data that you need you can store numbers or strings or books food recipes anything that you want so what are some other concepts that you should be familiar with well this here this first node is called root node so a root node is a node that does not have a parent and it is this node here and then Another concept that you should be familiar with is a leaf node. So can you guess what is a leaf node? So this is a leaf node, and then this is a leaf node, and this is a leaf node as well. So a leaf node is a node that does not have any children. And in any tree data structure, you can have multiple leaf nodes, but only one root node. 
So now that you understand the basic terminology, let's talk about different types of trees. So the first one is a regular tree and it can look like this, for example. So it has a parent-child relationship and it has a fluctuating amount of children. In this situation, it has three, but it can have more or less than that. So this is a regular tree. Another type of tree is binary tree. And here is an example of binary tree. So what does that mean? Well, like a regular tree, it also defines a parent-child relationship. But there is one more rule, and that is that each parent cannot have more than two child nodes. So it can have zero or one or two child nodes, and not more than that. So here we have a root node, it has two child nodes, and then this left child node has one child node, and the right node has two child nodes. And then these are leaf nodes, and they don't have any child nodes. So now that you know what a binary tree is, let's explain what is a binary search tree, also known as BST. And because I'm a very lazy person, I'll just call it BST. Okay, <laughs> so a BST is exactly the same as binary tree, except that its data is organized in a very specific way. So the values of nodes are organized in a specific way. So here is an example of a bust. Please don't call it bust. Why am I doing this to myself? So let's say that the root node has the value of 30. So the rule is that its left child should have the value that is lower than that, and then its right child should have the value that is higher than that. And then the same rule applies here. So the left child should have a lower value than its parent, and then the right child should have the value that is higher than its parent. And then here again, but since we have only the left child, that left child should have the value that is lower than its parent. Okay, so this is an example of binary search tree. And an important thing that I want to mention is that these boosts are used to facilitate the search of elements, as the name itself implies. So, binary search tree. <laughs> so now that you understand all of this, let's jump to coding part. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to represent a single node in code. So I want to represent a building block of tree data structure. And as you could already see, each node consists of three parts. So each node has data, that is number one, and then number two is left child pointer, and then third part is right child pointer. So how can we represent this node in code? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So I will say struct node like this, and I will create these three parts of each node. So I will say int data like this, so we are creating a binary tree whose nodes are storing integer data type. Okay, and then the second part is node pointer called left, this is left child, and then node pointer called right, and this is right child. Now let's see how we can create a new node. So I will add a function here that returns a node pointer, I will call it create node like this, and this function will receive an integer parameter called data, like this. So the job of this function will be to create a new node and to return the reference to that node, so that if we want to add left or right child to that node, we have that reference. So there will be four steps inside this function. Step number one will be to create a new node. Step number two is to set the data for that node. And then step number three is to take care of left and right child nodes, which will initially be null because we don't have child nodes when we create the parent node. And then step number four, and I cannot draw it, but please keep in mind that from this function here, we need to return a reference to the node that we added. In case that we want to add its children later, we need to have a reference to that node. So let's now translate this in code. So step number one, we create a new node like this, and then we set the value for that node like this, 
and then we say new node, its left child will be equal to new node, right child, and that will be equal to null PTR, because, because initially when we create a new node, it doesn't have left or right child. And then fourth and final step is to say return new node, so that we have a reference to the node that we just added outside of this function. So whoever invokes this function will receive a reference to newly added node. So now that you know how a node looks like in C++ code, and also how you can create a new node, let's see how we can represent a tree data structure in C++ code. So let's represent a tree that looks like this. So the first thing that I will do in order to represent this tree in C++ code is I will create a root node. So I will say node pointer called root and I will invoke this function here that we just created. So I will say create node and here I will pass the value of the root node and this picture here says that it is the value of 1. So with this we created a root node. Now the question is how can we add left and right child to this root node? Let me know in the comments if you have any idea before I answer this question. Okay, so in order to add this left child, number two, we need to say root left and then again we invoke this same function called create node, but this time we will pass the value of two. Okay, it's pretty easy. And then in order to add this right child, we say root right and then create node and we pass the value for that node. And then in order to add this node here, we need to say root left left. Okay, so I will say root left and then left again will be equal to create node and then the value for that node. And with this code, we have represented this tree data structure. And let's do another tree, but this time a bigger one. So let me paint it and I will put it on the screen together with the code. So here is the tree. It has nine elements and I divided it in four levels so that you can understand better. And then here is the code for that tree. So for example, if you want to add this element here, you would go root, left, right, left, and there is number nine. So let's check root, left, right, left, and then number nine. Okay. And then if you want, for example, to add this element here, you would go root, right, right, left, and there is 15. So root, right, right, left, and there is node 15. And now you can pause the video and analyze this tree and compare it with the code so that you can get a better understanding. So that would be all for this video. It is already becoming too long and I know that it is hard for you to focus for a long periods of time, the same way that it is harder for me to film a very long video in one sitting. So we will continue in the next video and talk about um, different algorithms traversing the tree and searching the tree. So make sure to watch that video, it will be linked on the screen. And if you want homework and to practice after this video, the best would be for you to find a study partner. So you would draw a tree for him or her and vice versa. And then both of you would translate that tree into C++ code. So share this video with someone who needs to learn about data structures and with someone who can benefit from it. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. And um, by the way, I will pin the code from this video in the comments in case that you need to use it. Bye.